Okay, so last time we showed you how to actually input data into SPSS. Uh, we had two variables, the SAT math and the like math. And we were just showing this so that we can kind of show the different options of SPSS. Uh, in this class, we actually won't be inputting much of our own data and instead be actually using a formal data set called the GSS. So we're going to go ahead and close this and open up the GSS. Then going to my GSS file, simply double click on this. Okay, now the SPSS opens up automatically and it uploads the data uh, of the 2006 and the first thing you see is just a bunch of data and it's kind of scary at first. Uh, the GSS is a huge survey done with many thousands of people uh, over a 30 year mark and as I scroll across the screen uh, the computer even has a hard time uh, calculating the actual values for each respondent as you can tell. But even though it has many more variables um, it operates very similar to the, our little example before, um, in, but we don't actually have to input data because it's already been inputted. And we have here respondents, like respondent 1, and I can click on him or her, and uh, you can see how this person answered the following questions. Um, so this Abony question, if I put my mouse over it, it tells me that this is a question about abortion if abortion is okay for any reason. Uh, and you can see what the respondent 2 answered. They answered 0 and 3 answered 0 and so forth. And if I actually want to know what that response means, I can go to my handy little tag here and click for value labels and it tells me that this respondent answered yes to this question. Now of course you want to know more information about this question. And you can do that by going to the variable view. And here, the variable view, you see many more variables than last time, whereas we had two. Here we have something like 1,200 variables. Uh, this is a smaller GSS data file than the actual one. But uh, we have this name. Uh, it's called Abony. And like our other example, the name kind of tells you a little bit about what the variable is and how it was named. There's a whole different uh, logic behind it and you can actually look up these names on the GSS codebook online but you can kind of tell what the value or what the question actually is by looking at the label so we see that abortion if woman wants it for any reason and we can click here on values I can highlight it and double click on it and it tells me how this variable is actually coded uh, where zero equals non applicable means that the respondent wasn't asked this question uh, yes, they believe that abortion is okay, no, and so forth. Uh, DK means don't know, and NA means uh, the respondent put not answered. So they were asked the question, but they simply didn't put a response. Uh, clicking the OK closes that file, and I can run a frequency like I did with my own variables. And I do, By doing that, I just go to the menu bar, go to Analyze which has many of the statistical uh, techniques that you can use. It gives me a whole list of them. But I just want to run a basic descriptive. So I highlight descriptives and another menu pops up. And this the frequencies, something pretty basic. We just click on that. And a little submenu pops up, just like last time. And here I have a whole array of variables on the left uh, menu here. And I can scroll down. It shows me all the different variables in this data set. And I was interested in the first one, which is convenient, and I just click on that, it's highlighted, and I move one over. And if I were interested in another variable, I can just highlight that and move it over. Uh, and I can do that with many as many variables as I want. And if I click one by accident and I don't want to run a frequency on that variable, I just click it over, it goes back. So basically moving this back and forth is telling you um, this is the list of variables and this is going to be the target variable, the actual variable you're going to run the analysis. So I've selected this variable, which is that abortion variable, and I'm going to run a frequency and I just click OK. And just like last time, this output document pops up that SPSS has generated. Uh, it gives you two little tables. The first one just tells you uh, how many people answered this question. So valid respondents, it uh, gives me something close to 2,000, uh, whereas 2,500 people did not respond to this question. Then I actually have the frequency table itself. Uh, gives me the title or the label of the question. Gives me the valid respondents, responses, uh, yes and no. Uh, it tells me how many people said yes and no. Um, and then it actually gives me the valid percentage of what this 
uh, frequency corresponds to. You notice that percent and valid percent are different because percent includes all the responses, whereas valid resp uh, percentage uh, takes out the missing respondents responses. I'm sorry. Uh, we'll talk more about missing responses uh, in the next video. But here, because the GSS is a um, representative sample, we can make an inference that 40% of the respondents for this survey said yes, uh, abortion is okay for any reason. Uh, and we can make an inference that the entire U.S. population, on average, 40% of people say yes to this question, whereas 60% say no. So I'm just going to minimize this by clicking on this little minimizing button and uh, it doesn't go away it's still down here in the bottom uh, so if I wanted to go back to my output I just click on it and it comes up and of course you won't have an output window until you run at least one analysis Okay, so let's talk about some of the regulations about how you name variables. And the only reason why we're covering this is because a couple times during the semester we're going to have to recode some of these variables because perhaps maybe we don't like that the values are set a certain way and we want to recode that variable and tell SPSS to generate a new variable. So it's good to know some of the rules behind what you can and cannot name the variables. So here we have some basic regulations about variables. The first one is that it can be 64 characters long and it needs to start with a letter. Uh, there can be no spaces between the variables. Um, it's okay to use symbols uh, as long as uh, the symbols are um, not, you're not starting the variable with a symbol as long as it's in the middle. Uh, variable names cannot end with a period or underscore and it doesn't really matter if you have uh, capitalize variables or not because the variable names are not case sensitive. So if we were going to change the name of this uh, variable and we wanted to call it abortion opinions, um, you would realize that SPSS wouldn't allow us to do this because it has a space on it. You can see uh, this error message comes up saying that it has an illegal character, basically the space. So it returns back to its original name. So let's look at the label. Uh, the label can be actually quite extensive and it can be longer than this and there's only a, one rule about the label and that it is that it can only be 255 characters. So unless you have an elaborate question several paragraphs long um, it can be uh, you're not going to have a problem. And also we can change values here. Um, if we wanted to add more values or wanted to change the values, uh, we could do so in this uh, um, window. Um, and there's also certain rules about values and we can actually have up to 120 characters for each label. Uh, and we usually need to value labels for discrete variables and not value for continuous variables. So our SAT score like last time is really a continuous scale uh, from 1 through 800 and we don't actually have to name uh, what 1 means because it's self-evident. We don't have to say for instance 1 equals 1. We could but that's kind of uh, pointless. We usually name uh, just discrete variables. So now we're going to talk a little bit about, about measurement categories and if you click on this you see that you have three different types of categories. Um, and scale means that it's a continuous variable uh, whereas ordinal and nominal means that they're discrete variables and in class we'll discuss the difference between a continuous variable and, and a discrete variable um, but for here for SPSS it's just good to remember that a scale means continuous and ordinal nominal nominal means discrete okay so let's look at some examples um, of the variables and different variables that we have one is the SEI which is stands for social economic index and that's a continuous variable it's a scaling variable in terms of SPSS which just means that uh, 1 through 97 have specific meanings um, and that it, there's a the ordering of the variable makes makes a makes a difference and also that there's um, assumptions about the intervals of the variable so they're equal distant meaning that a, the difference between a 1 and a 2 is the same as the difference between a 96 and 97 um, other variables though that we have our difference doesn't really make any sense at all so a variable like male and female are actual categorical variables or considered nominal 
meaning that you know an SPSS one equals male and two equals female, but we could easily change those meanings uh, so that perhaps one equals female and male equals two. Uh, it, the ordering doesn't really matter, and a lot of variables on the SPSS are like that. Okay, uh, the last thing I want to show you in this video is quickly um, about if when looking at your own screen, if it looks a little bit different than my screen, uh, one thing that you might be seeing is uh, how the variables are actually displayed in the little menus that come up. Uh, sometimes uh, I've been showing you and it's been showing the names of the variables and sometimes it's actually going to show you the labels instead. So instead of the name Abony, it's just showing you the label. Uh, which can be kind of uh, helpful sometimes, but sometimes it's not very helpful. I don't find it very helpful if you kind of already know the name or you already know what the variable you want. And this is just an option you can change. And to do that, you could just go to um, Edit, close this, and at the very bottom you'll see Options. You just click on that, and it'll show you the default settings of SPSS. And for variable lists, it tells you right now that it's displaying labels instead of names. And I like the names instead of labels, so I'm going to switch that and then it tells you how the ordering actually is done and right now it's done through file just meaning that the order is done by uh, how the variables are inputted which is really not that helpful for me so I'm just gonna put alphabetical and I can click on apply and it'll change the setting or if I want to change the actual default setting I can press OK and restart uh, SPSS um, I'm just gonna click apply Uh, it's going to ask if it's, I'm sure, if I want to reset the settings, I'm going to say yes. Press OK. And now when I go to Analyze, click on Frequencies, and now when the Frequency uh, menu comes up, you can tell that it displays names instead of labels.